Now we did see some tutorial videos to integrate your devices using Zigbee as well as the MQTT network protocol. Very simple and straightforward. Now let's put the two together to expose your Zigbee devices to HomeKit with ease by integrating Zigbee to MQTT and get that powerful combo all in one place. So let's not waste our time like I always say and let's jump into this tutorial. Well, welcome to my channel Tech with Eddie, which is all about integrating your IoT devices with your preferred smart home ecosystem. If you are into HomeKit DIY, then there are tons of plugin tutorials that I have done. So please do take a look and don't feel shy to like, share and subscribe to always follow along. Now in a nutshell on how this plugin works. The plugin listens to the MQTT messages published by Zigbee to MQTT. It detects the devices using the device topic. The device definition is provided by Zigbee to MQTT and it contains a list of exposed attributes which this plugin uses to determine which HomeKit services and characteristics to expose. This plugin should work with most lights, switches and sensors. In fact, it supports 1358 devices from 200 different plus vendors you will be surprised that there is a very, very, very minimal user configuration. The plugin does most of the work. So for more information on which attributes are supported and how they are mapped, please refer to the documentation link in the description. Anyways, for all of this to work with Apple HomeKit, we will need one, sensors. For this tutorial, we will be using the Xiaomi sensors and Akara button. Two, your DIY platform. We will be using a custom hoops installed using a Raspberry Pi 4 and a Convy 2 Zigbee gateway. You also want to make sure you are using a USB cable extension with the Convy 2 for this setup. Now I have broken down the video into four parts with their timestamps in the description. They are 1. MQTT install, 2. Zigbee to MQTT install, 3. Plugin installing config, and from there, we will go into the sensor integration and a quick demo. So it's a pretty interesting video. Let's not waste time and let's begin. Let's SSH into the server. And once that's completed, all you have to do is go ahead and copy paste all of the commands. I've added this into your uh, into the description. Just follow them, follow the instructions. And from there, you are going to go into the uh, configuration file and please add this configuration at the end of it. You want to make sure allow anonymous is false so that it uses a username and password. Hit on save and exit. And from there, we're going to create a username and password. So you want to choose this and you want to make sure you want to save this information someplace because you will need this in the, in the Zigbee to MQTT plugin configuration. Once that's completed, you want to go ahead and test it. So you want to use that same username and password. And once that's completed, let's open up your preferred MQTT software and let's connect with the service, providing the IP address as well as the credentials. And once that's completed, you will see a green light that the service is connected and you're good to go. Now for the Zigbee to MQTT install, you want to make sure just follow these commands. It's very straightforward. First things first, you want to detect the conv2 stick. Once you get a positive output, we can go ahead now with the installation. So it takes around about 15 minutes. Just follow the commands and copy paste it correctly. So first command is to install it. We're going to download all of the packages. Once that's completed, you, we will go ahead and uh, copy paste the node.js uh, software. And once that's completed, what we're going to do is we're just going to check that the node version and the NPM version is up to date. Then from there, we're going to clone the Zigbee to MQTT repository. So we're going to download all of the packages. 
And from there, we are going to uh, add it to our service. You want to make sure uh, you want to add in your username. So in this case, it's going to be hoops, which is the user ID. Once that's completed, you want to change directory and you want to go ahead and do the NPM install. Now this takes around about three to four minutes based on your internet connection. And once that's completed, what we're going to do right now is going to configure the Zigbee to MQTT. You're going to add in the IP address and the username and password of the MQTT service that we had done previously. So go ahead and add in your IP address together with the port. And then we're going to go ahead and add in the username and password. Once that's done, you want to go ahead and save and exit. From there, you want to go ahead and add an order uh, detection generation of key. I've added this into the configuration and we can also double check that the uh, command has been added to the configuration.yml file. Now from, from here, the fun part begins in starting the ZigBee 2 MQTT service. Uh, first things first, as we are in the directory, let's go into npm start. Give it a couple of seconds for the entire service to start and you will see a, a, a list of messages being thrown at you. No worries, this is all in the detection that the uh, gateway has been found and all the services are running. Now from here, we're going to uh, add in a couple of more commands to ensure that the service restarts if there's any uh, uh, device network restarts. So let's go ahead and copy paste all of the commands. And from here, we first thing you want to go and add in the configuration. And you also want to update the user information. So from PI, we're going to add in hoops. And let's go ahead and save. And then from here, we're going to go ahead and run the command again, just to make sure the configuration is working. And we're going to start the service one more time. And then from here, we're going to add in uh, to show status of the entire service. And we can see the service is working properly. And one last command to make sure that the uh, service starts automatically. So from here, we've completed the entire Zigbee 2 MQTT installation and let's reboot the server. Well, the good thing is we've got the entire service up and running, but there's one more step that I figured out works perfect and also is in line with the Decons application that Foscon provides for the Convi gateway. With the Zigbee 2 MQTT application, you can get a front end view of how the devices are all connected into your network. So it shows you which are the router, which are the coordinators and which are the Zigbee devices. So let's go now and install the front end application so you get an entire graphical view of the uh, Zigbee network. So we're going to log into the server once again. And from there, I've added the front end application. But before we do that, let's get into the configuration.yml file. And let's go over to the uh, next link to add in the front end information. So let's copy the first three lines. And from here, we're going to leave the port, but you can select uh, anyone you want and also add in the uh, host of the device. So in this case, my Raspberry Pi is at this address and I left the port as it is. So let's go ahead and save. And we're going to do a sudo reboot. Give it a couple of seconds for the service to start. Once that's completed, let's go into the IP address and add in that port 8080. And there we are, the graphical user interface of the Zigbee uh, network and also a dashboard. So this makes it very easy. Let's go into the plugin configuration. Let's log in. And all we got to do is go to search and add in the plugin Z2M install. Very straightforward uh, configuration for this plugin. Once the plugin is downloaded, we will go ahead and add in the MQTT server information. So in this case, it's the IP address that we put in the MQTT service, as well as the username and password. That's it from here, nothing more. So let's go ahead and save changes. Give it a couple of seconds for the service to start. And then from here, within the log section, you will see 
that the ZigBee to MQTT service is connected. And we can see that the devices, that the gateway is also listening on the network. Now let's go ahead and add in the sensors. So when we are in the dashboard of the ZigBee to MQTT, you can see the devices. You can also access the dashboard and you can also get a map of your ZigBee network. So in this case, I've got two devices, the switch and a Sonoff uh, outlet and all connected to the ZigBee gateway. So for all of the uh, sensor devices, you want to make sure you want to go ahead and put them all into pairing mode. Um, and it's very important uh, you do that when you are uh, working with the uh, ZigBee to MQTT. Now remember the Conbi 2 stick is able to sniff your network. So if any of your devices are into pairing mode, it automatically captures it. If it doesn't, you can always restart the service. So you want to make sure whenever you uh, pair a device, you want to re refresh the bridge. And in this case, you will see that uh, the devices have been detected. I can rename them. And also uh, you can see them in the logs that the devices have been added. Let's go ahead and refresh them again. And you can see that the uh, sensor has been added as well. So you can rename, you cannot allow duplicates, but uh, let's give a proper one. And when you restart the service, you will see that the uh, uh, devices have been added to the uh, accessory section. You can see that the contact sensor is closed and you can also see that the button is also available. Now, when you go towards the home app, you'll see that they are available as well. That's the button. Let's quickly configure it as well. So for a single press, we will turn on the lampshade. And on double press, we are going to turn off the lampshade. For the sensor, we can also see that it's being activated. So uh, there's a couple of information. And for the contact one, that's the Xiaomi window sensor. You can see that it, uh, it's opening and closing the, during the demo. And also you can go and change its uh, display. So you can change it as a window and the icons change, you can do it as a blind. So the couple of options and the uh, attributes change accordingly without any additional configuration. So from here, within the dashboard of ZigBee to MQTT, you can see all of the devices that have been already added. So it's very clean. You can also see the uh, network map and how they all connected between each other, which is a lot more fluid and straightforward than the Decons app. So we've integrated the sensors into ZigBee to MQTT service. So let's go ahead and let's quickly test this Akara button. So if I double press it, you'll see that the lampshade just turns off right beside me. And if I single press it, you'll see that the uh, lampshade has come on. The response time using the ZigBee to MQTT is a lot more faster than the default Convy software, as well as the Decons uh, dashboard. So uh, it's a lot more better and a, a lot more uh, are responsive than the actual applications. Finally, there we are. Collaboratively, we have installed the ZigBee to MQTT service and have integrated sensors into Apple HomeKit, giving you that powerful combo. Now to keep all of this going, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe because that's the real driver, that's the real motivator. The more the merrier. And if there's anything I can help with, don't be shy to leave a comment down below. And don't forget to visit the developer's webpage to give them your support as well. So until the next time, my friends, stay safe, have a nice day, cheers, and happy automation.